Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Let's go to our next guest, president of the Augustine Institute, Dr. Tim Gray. Hello, doctor. Hey, John. Great to be with you. Great to have you on, man. Uh, For those that have never heard of the Augustine Institute, what is it? Yeah, so a lot of people know about Forms, which is a digital platform on their parishes. So we produce that. We produce the Amen app. But we also have the leading Catholic graduate school theology. So we have about 550 students in our MA in Catholic theology and now Catholic education. What's your background, Tim? Were were you always Catholic? You a convert? How, How did that work out? Yeah, you know, uh, my doctorate's in Scripture, so most people assume that I'm a Protestant convert to Catholicism. <laughs> right. But I'm actually a cradle Catholic. I, I'm not a revert. i you know, always been Catholic and, uh, and yet love Scripture, and I hope that becomes the new norm. So that's kind of my passion. Was the faith always kind of pretty important or primary in your life? It was. You know, I had a, a good Catholic family, and, you know, it was, I, it, when I was 16, I got involved in uh, a youth group at a parish, neighboring parish, not even my own, and that set me on fire. So, you know, I, I'll never forget that great retreat and the youth group, and, you know, since 16, I knew I just could, felt called by God and on fire. Well, what were you doing before this? Because, I mean, this, this, is a, this is a huge deal. How, how do you get here? Yeah, so we're pretty excited about our move now to St. Louis. Is that what you, I'm sure No, 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 no. I, I'm asking you oh, okay. personally. How oh. do you get to, yeah. to, to the Augustine Institute from your back? Oh, how do I get to the Augustine yeah. Institute? Oh, yeah. We'll get to the so Augustine in, Institute itself. Yeah, I yeah, promise. yeah. So back in 2001, I, I uh, moved to Denver, and Archbishop Chappie was Archbishop of Denver at the time. Nice. Uh, I had finished my doctorate at Catholic U, and I had been teaching at Christendom College while I was doing my doctorate. And I had worked for Shapu when he was the Bishop of Rapid City, South Dakota, for a couple of years. And that was, you know, providentially in 93 when I took all the youth of South Dakota down with Shapu to Denver for mm. World Youth Day. Nice. And so I had that connection with him. And then he uh, reopened a new seminary in Denver, wanted me to come out and teach. And I said, look, I'd love to teach at the seminary, but I'd also like to start a new kind of graduate school for the new evangelization nice. that would focus on scripture and evangelization and engage in the culture. And he's like, great, well, come out here and you can build it. So huh. I went out there to do that, and that's when we started the Augustine Institute shortly after. Man, I did not know that, actually. So this is kind of your baby. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I've I know, you can't answer friends. that very well, but yeah, I get you. I get <laughs> yeah. you. That's pretty awesome, man. All right, so here we are now. You are uh, not in St. Louis yet. You have purchased the grounds of 284 acres. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, so we've been able to purchase the Boeing, Boeing's Leadership and Training Campus uh, north of St. Louis on the Missouri River. That wow. it is. It's 286 beautiful acres that are just stunning, and uh, a facility that's made for training and um, education. And now we get to use that for the Catholic Church. Why move? Yeah, we weren't looking to move. So, you know, four months ago, this wasn't on my radar screen, and uh, we were doing well in Denver. But we had filled up our building in the Denver Tech Center, and Denver's becoming more and more expensive, and we didn't have housing for our on-campus students. And the Archdiocese of St. Louis notified us that Boeing was going to sell this property, and they said this could be a, a great location for the Augustine Institute. So we went out and checked it out, and we're like, oh, my gosh, they have – Four big residence buildings, all connected with this education conference center. So it was like an ideal retreat conference center, and it would work great for our graduate school as well. So um, that, it was just kind of this amazing opportunity that we didn't see coming. Well, a Catholic apostolate does not just move into a diocese or archdiocese. Uh, unnoticed or without the permission specifically of the, the local ordinary there. Uh, what was what has that process been like for the Augustine Institute working with the bishop in the archdiocese? Well, you know, one of our alumni was uh, the head of evangelization, Brian Miller. Well, that's nice. Works, works for the archdiocese of St. Louis. And then uh, he worked with Father Chris Martin, who's a great priest at the archdiocese, and then Archbishop Rosansky. And so I went out and met with Archbishop Rosansky, and he was super gracious nice. and inviting. And he, he really wanted the Augustine Institute to come out and work with his schools and parishes. And, and uh, yeah, so it was just a, a, an incredibly gracious invitation and welcome from the Archdiocese of St. Louis. 
which used to be the Rome of the West, yeah. is, is what they called it, right? That's and, what I called uh, it earlier. Yeah, so that's what we want to do is let's make it the Rome of the West again. And with this incredible campus, we can, you know, draw people from all over the greater Midwest to come for retreats, for conferences, for training, and having the graduate school there will be fantastic as well. Are you completely closing down Denver's campus then? No, we'll keep the building there. We actually rent out to some other Catholic apostolates, and there's a long list of apostles that want to rent from us there. So we'll use that as a great Catholic ecosystem in that building, but most of our operations will move to St. Louis. And so the graduate school, for example, will move to St. Louis. Well, you you are a people with families. I mean, that that can't be an easy decision for families either, (laughs) right? How does that work? No, it's for for all of us. I mean, I'm leaving my my parents in Colorado, my son and his two little my two little granddaughters and so yeah so for a lot of us it's a big sacrifice but you know what's amazing john is that our people have rallied to this they see this as god's call and mission and and you know they're there for the mission not the mountains as we say so we love the mountains on colorado but the people who came out there and you know our faculty and staff they're they're made for mission and so they see this as an invitation to magnify the mission of the, um, I guess, the students of the church. How long do you anticipate this move fully taking? Yeah, I think for overall it'll take three years. You know, this this summer we're getting our faculty out, and we're going to start classes this September, this fall. Really? Which is a bit, of, which is a bit dramatic and amazing. Um, but uh, but then you know the rest of the teams moving our studios out and things like that will take longer. So that's incredible, man. I mean, so you, you're this fall you'll already be touching down there with some sort of uh, some sort of uh, ministry going on. That's the goal, wow. and uh, I'm actually in St. Louis the next couple of days. You know, trying to get, look at what we need to do for the campus and trying to find a house for my family. So. Besides moving closer to um, uh, us here in Iowa, what can Iowans gain from the Augustine Institute moving to St. Louis? Well, you know, so much of what we do is digital, like Formed and the Amen app. So yeah. that's already, you have, everybody in Iowa has that in their back pocket, so that's easy. But I do think once we start doing conferences and retreats, nice. you know, it's, it's you know, a, 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 not even a day's drive oh. to to get here, and I think that's going to be really special. Five and I'm a half hours to, from Des Moines. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, and what we one of the things we did, John, is we, and we were discerning this, is we said, how many people live, you know, a day's drive? How many Catholics live a day's drive from St. Louis, where we're going to be? And it was over 17 million. Wow. And we have less than 3 million in Denver. So we think, uh, you know, we're going to be able to host people. Uh, and we have these digital platforms, but this gives us a physical platform in which to engage with people. And we're, we're excited about that. And you're already looking for houses there. You're ready. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking for a house. Yes, I'm, we're going to be, the grades are going to be a bit uh, homeless this summer until we land on a house. So, And I'm I'm praying for all of our faculty who are looking for housing. Yeah. So it's we're all all a bit uprooted, but that's that's okay. We're going to be roaming Catholics. Yeah, there you go uh, for the summer. This is so. all new, and, and it, it is exciting. I can sense the excitement, and yeah, and I, and I can I can imagine, right? I mean, to to acquire a two hundred and eighty plus acre former Boeing Leadership Center uh, is not a small feat. So congratulations, man. And all the work you guys continue to do, love your resources, love your products. What you guys put out is just quality. And that's what I've always loved about the Augustine Institute is when you get a resource in, friends, or anything, when you're taking a look at formed, whatever, it, it, you guys just emphasize quality, 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 and it's never sacrificed. So God bless you, man. Keep up the good work. What's, what's the website? How can people check you guys out? Yeah, AugustineInstitute.org or formed.org. And, uh, you know, and uh, as well as you can look it up on the apps for the Amen app, which yeah. is free, which is great. Awesome. So, Tim Gray. Th- thanks so much, John. You notice that what, one of our core values is excellence, and so I appreciate you seeing that key I do. element of what we on try On a regular basis, for. man. God bless you. Tim Gray, everyone. Take care. Thanks, John. God bless. All right. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.